honor of National Breast Cancer Awareness Month, she's opening up about her own journey. And before we talk about your diagnosis, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Wonderful. Uh, yeah. Yes. yes. And you were diagnosed back in 2012. I was, March of 2012. I was diagnosed at 39 years old. Wow. Uh, no family history. Mm -hmm. um, and it was really just a fluke. Todd had a friend, had actually had two male friends who were battling different cancers. But he said, you know, one morning I was getting in the shower or we were in the bathroom. He's like, you need to have a mammogram. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's so random. Right. So I said, you know what? Sure, Todd, I'll have a mammogram. And, you know, and I had done self-breast exams and, and thought that I was very in tune with my body. Um, but I called my doctor, my OBGYN, and she said, you know, Julie, I don't even know if your insurance will pay. You're not right. 40 yet. Right. You don't have any family exactly. history. I said, you know what? I'm just going to do it because he's not going to shut up if I don't. <laughs> and so I went in and had the um, mammogram. And I thought... Didn't think anything about it. Your you know, first my first right. mammogram. And it does not run in your family. No, it does not run in my family. And I was really like large naturally. Uh -huh. And so, you know, they always say women that have these huge boobs, you know, they always have to do set other images and go back. So when they said, you know, we need to get some additional images, I really didn't even think anything about it then. Was it like an ultra so you did the mammogram? I first? did the mammogram, then I went back and did another mammogram, and then I did an ultrasound, uh -huh. and then you know, that led to the biopsy. Um, and it was kind of a whirlwind, you know. Right. And so when I found out, you know, it was breast cancer, then, you know, we kind of just went into autopilot at that yeah. point. Uh, and I ended up going to Johns Hopkins and having my surgery. Mm -hmm. um, I was diagnosed on March 5th, and I was on the surgery on the table March 22nd. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And there, there's just no way to prepare. No, for there that really type isn't. Of news. No, you know, and I think unfortunately in this country, so many people are battling breast cancer. You know someone that has mm -hmm. breast cancer, it's in your family. Um, I want to say the figure something like two point eight million right, right now in the country are battling a lot. some it's a lot. And we're all affected in some way. But until it happens to you, mm -hmm. you don't you know, I never thought about it. You right. know, I was like, oh, I'm gonna have this mammogram and it's gonna be fine. I don't have any family history. Uh, and that wasn't the case. So it does, it kind of stops you in your right. tracks. So how did you, know? you decide to treat it? Um, well, so I went to a doctor in Atlanta first, and they're like, you know what? We feel like you could do a lumpectomy and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And so we immediately started researching. Todd, yeah. I don't think, slept for like days, oh. weeks. And Can't imagine. he was on the phone. He was like, I feel like, I honestly feel like God is telling me you need to be at Johns okay. Hopkins, uh -huh. even though we had Emory right in Atlanta. And so for me, the right decision was to have a double mastectomy. And it, people say, gosh, that was kind of, you know, that was kind of drastic. It wasn't yeah. for me. I had a six-year-old child at the time. Right. Grayson was six. So in my mind, I had to do whatever it was that I had to do to make sure that, A, yeah. this was not going to come back. And so even though the doctor said, you can do a lumpectomy, I chose to do the double mastectomy and glad that I did. Yeah. Once I got to Johns Hopkins and was in surgery, I actually had two tumors. Wow. They never caught it at the, at right. the first time. And so my doctor said it would have been really hard to have ever mm -hmm. gotten clear margins. So for me, it was the right decision. Definitely. And that's what I tell people all the time. Listen, I'm not in the medical field, but you have to do what you feel in your heart is the best thing for you. Right. You know, because this is a doctor. They're smart, they're educated, yes, but they don't know you. They right. don't know your body. And so for that, I was so grateful, and I had Todd as my medical advocate because he was on it, you know, because yeah. he is the worrier in our family. Yeah. So, you know. I could not imagine Todd at a hospital, but, by the way. I, you know what, and he was. Nurse! Amazing. <laughs> Sarah, five seconds. He was amazing. Yeah. Um, so I had the double mastectomy. Followed up with reconstruction, which mm -hmm. is a you know it's a process. Right. You know, yeah. it took you know several years Absolutely. to get where I was felt comfortable and I was Absolutely. felt like I was done with it. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, it was it was crazy. It was the craziest time of, of my life, you know, because right. it hits you out of nowhere. And I mean, and it does women every single day. Yeah. And that's why people say, oh my gosh, you're it's amazing. You're telling your story. You're just laying it all out there. And I am because I feel like we were given this platform. If it causes one woman to right. go and have a mammogram that, 
you know, she's sitting there just like I was. I'm 39. Yeah. I don't have any family history. I don't need to do this. It doesn't right. matter. It does not matter. It does not matter. It does not discriminate. And so for that reason, I thought, okay, this is my platform. This is a platform that has been given to me because of my experience. Right. And Absolutely. I have to make sure that I tell it as and much as I possibly can. other people. Absolutely.